Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Are you the one who's preparing for interviews? So you must have definitely heard about Stack. And if you are wondering what Stack is and why there is so much of hype around Stack, then you are you are at the right place. In today's video, we're going to talk about what is the Stack data structure, okay? And we're also going to see is there a way where we can use an inbuilt you know function or inbuilt class in Java to use Stack? And there definitely is. In collections framework, there is a class called as stack, which basically gives you out of box all the operations for the stack data structure. So in this video, we're also going to talk about this. Hi everyone, my name is Dipali and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I post content related to software engineering. So if you haven't, please do consider subscribing. Let's begin. What is stack? You must have heard about arrays and array list, right? If you do not know what an array list is, you can just check out my earlier video in the collection framework. So arrays basically allows you to have random access to the data, right? Because there's continuously, the data is allocated continuously. Array list is basically allows for a dynamic, you know, allocation and dynamic your, dynamically your, the size of the, the data can increase and decrease. That is the strength of array list. But what about a stack? A stack can be considered a data structure. It's a linear data structure in which you can add or delete the data, but it does follow a certain rules for addition and deletion. That means you can't just, you know, directly uh, access the data in, you know, random fashion or, you know, might be through index. That is not possible, which was possible in the case of an array and array list. In stack, we have a certain rule and using that rule, we can insert data and using that specific rule, the data can be deleted or removed from the data structure basically it's a data structure so if it's a data structure the entire job of a data structure is to store the data and be able to perform all the crud operations on the data structure so we are going to talk about all the various crud, or crud operations which you can do on stack now before we dive into that let's understand where do we need stack or where are we using stack in our practical you know day-to-day -day life so I guess everybody knows programming language, right? I am hoping that. So whether it's Java or C++, you must have written methods or functions. So behind the scenes, compiler basically uses stack to handle your function calls. So stack is widely used to handle that. If you know about recursion, recursion actually uses stack. Basically, it's called recursion stack to basically keep track of all the function calls which go on during the lifetime of a recursion function. So this is where, you know, your stack is used. So let's begin. Let's consider a scenario. Here I have basically a table. Okay. So just assume that this is a table and I have some pile of books or some stack of books here, right? So this is book one, book two, book three and book four. Now I want to put this books, you know, one above the other on this table. So how would I do that? Let's pick up the first book. I'll take this and put it on my table. The second book. The second book, if I want to arrange it, you know, like in a pile. So I'm, the second book is going to go on top of the first one, which I have placed, right? Then the third book and then the last one goes on top of it, right? Now, if you want to remove the books from the pile, right? What would you do? Yes, you can definitely might be removed in between, but we do not want, if you do that, if it's a big pile, it's possibility that all the books might just fall down on you, right? So what is the easy or the efficient way of doing it? Might be if you want to remove a particular book, you would first remove the top book, right? You would remove it, then you would go on and remove might be the second book. So if you wanted the second book, you would first have to remove the top one and then go ahead and remove the second one. This actually what we did, right? The example of pile of books, okay, is what stack is in computer programming. Okay, the concept of stack is actually taken from the stack of books in real life. Let's let's understand by taking an example. Suppose if I have numbers 10, 12, 14, 2, 6. Let's say I'm going to add these numbers into my stack. So 10, so this is my stack. This is how I have my stack. If you can see here, there is only one opening, right? It looks like a long container and there is only one opening to it. Let me just remove this table which I had drawn. So it just has one long op one opening. That means I can remove and I can even delete and remove the data or I can add the data only from one end, which is this one open end, which I have, right? So if I want to add data 10, this data 10 will be added and it'll go to the bottom of my container. 
Then I want to add 12. 12 goes on top of 10. 14. Okay. Now might be after 14, I want to remove the data. If you now want to remove the data, if you want, let's say you want to want uh, to remove, let's say the number 10, you want hold of number 10. Now to remove 10 or to get hold of 10, how? Because there's only one opening for addition and removal of my data. I first need to remove what? I need to first remove 14 from my container. So once 14 is removed, then I need to remove 12 and then only I'll be able to access the data 10. That means addition and removal. Okay. Both the cases are happening from only one opening. Right. This is what is this particular container is called as stack. All right. The addition of data into a stack is called as the push operation. Removal of data from the stack is called as the pop operation. All right. And if you notice when I was adding data 10, 12, 14, okay if you see if i had to remove the data from the stack the number 14 was the last data which was inserted into the stack if i have to start removing the data from my stack whatever was the data which was last added is the data which will be removed first what am i saying whatever data which was last added will be the one which will be removed first right that means 14 will go will be removing first from the stack after 14 what was the next data which was added 12 so 12 goes and then 10 that means this follows stack basically follows a property or a policy called as last in first out last in first out whatever was last to enter into the stack is the first one to go out to addition is called push and uh, removal is called as pop now with this if i have a stack right you can create a stack now you can think of stack like a container okay it looks somewhat like a long tall you know like a bucket right where you can addition and removal both these things can be done only from one opening okay addition to the stack is called push and removal of the stack is called as pop right so now let's have some numbers here let's say i want to push 12 right so 12 will be inserted into the stack next i want to do is push 6 so six gets inserted into the stack. Now what if, what if I do not, because stack is a data structure, right? I should, I do not want to only, you know, add and remove the data. Might be I just want to know what is the element which is at the top of my stack. Top of my stack means the, what is the data which is at the very top of my stack. I just want to know, but I do not want to delete that data. You can do so by using an operation which is called as peak operation. Okay, peak operation is going to simply return you what data is present at the top of the stack. This is going to return me the value 6, but 6 is not removed from the stack. When you use the operation pop, that's when the data 6 will be deleted or removed from the stack. Then when you say, then here also if you notice, I have not mentioned, I have not given any kind of parameter as to what data should be removed because it is a stack, it is going to follow the policy of last in and first out. That means it knows which data needs to be removed from the stack. Next when I do push, suppose say I want to push 20, so 20 gets added on the top of 12. Now when I do peak, what should be my answer? My peak would be 20 because the top of my stack I have what? 20. Now when I pop, what will I get? I'm going to get 20 and this will be removed from my stack. Okay, so I hope this is clear as well as what a stack data structure is. Now, uh, you must have heard about collections in Java. So if you're basically, you know, uh, solving a problem, right, a coding question and you want to use stack to solve a problem statement, you can use straight away the collection framework to give you an inbuilt stack class, which gives you all these functions out of the box. So let's go to IntelliJ and have a look at that. So the stack, it belongs to a package java.util, which and you have to have to import it, right? You can create a stack by using the line stack, give the, what kind of data will you be inserting into the stack? If it's an integer, you say integer. If it is a long, say long. If it's a string, say string. So you can you have to mention here, what kind of data type will be the, of the data, which will be inserted into the stack. Give the name of the stack, and then you create a stack using new stack. And then if you want to add the data, you use the function push st dot and because the name of my stack is st i'm going to say st dots push and i have to mention the data which i need to push 
Then when you want to find out the size of the stack, you can do so by saying st dot size. It gives you right now how many elements are present in my stack. One, two, three, four. It should give me a four. So let's run this, and you would see that the size of my stack is four. Next. If you want to find out what is present at the top of the stack without removing the data, you just want to know what data is at the top of the stack. You can do so using the function st.p. So when I say st.p, we know that which was the data which was last inserted, that was number 30. So 30 should be present at the top of my stack. Next, next when you say you want to remove the data, when you use, you have to use a function called as st.pop. All right, so st.pop is going to give you what data 30 because that is present at the top of my stack. Then if you want to check whether the uh, whether there is any data present in my stack or not, you can have a function which is called as empty. This is a Boolean uh, function. It returns true if the stack is empty. Otherwise, it returns a false. Here, because the stack is not empty, it's going to return me a false. So these are some must know functions for stack if you want to code your data structures and algorithm question. Hope this helps.